that we've done so far. So it's almost, well, calculated. We've done 13 shows. We've done a couple, like, doubled up. So it's almost been a year. So we're close to it. It's good. Thank you for coming out, you guys. It's beautiful outside. So thank you for coming inside and chilling out for a little bit. I appreciate that. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Keith Evans, and I am the producer of the show. And uh, also, just so you guys know, a few things, just so you guys know. Um, I just started on Foursquare. I know, man. Eh? Like, you almost threw up in your mouth a little bit? Yeah. I understand that. Uh, so, if you guys are like into Foursquare and you do that, feel free to go on Foursquare and check in to a night of comedy. Uh, it's on Foursquare, so you can check in and do that whole thing and be lame like everybody else, and that'll be fun. So there you go. Um, we have a bevy of comedians tonight that are going to tickle your funny bone, and it's going to be a great time. Um, let's start off with a few things, first of all. Um, they say that the camera adds 10 pounds. I'm going to say that a girl's Facebook profile picture subtracts 15 pounds. If she does it like this, that's another 5 pounds. If she makes a duck face, that's another 2 pounds. That's 22 pounds unaccounted for once you meet this girl. Now, but it's okay. It's fine because she has an iPhone. And when she texted you, I'm pretty, it was autocorrect because she actually texted I'm Precious from the movie Precious. So, that's how that works out. Just so you guys, that's an FYI, that's not even a joke, that's just a public service announcement. So you guys understand that. Um, like I said, we have a bevy of good comedians tonight. Um, don't get scared, Crown Point, but including me, three of our comedians are black. Now, be careful, because there is a black zombie apocalypse coming. Are you ready for it? No, you're not taking this seriously. Are you ready for it? If you do not laugh at us, we will eat your face off. Like that's how it will happen. Have you heard this in the news about the black zombies eating people's faces off? There's a guy in Miami, Florida, a uh, black guy, who went and ate a homeless man's face off, which is like, that's unsanitary, number one. Number two, that's gonna totally fuck up the Trayvon Martin case, like completely. Like, because they're going to be like, oh, well, George Zimmer was just trying to zombies. Like, oh, now we're screwed. Trayvon Martin's in jail. Or dead. Sorry. I totally forgot where he was right now. <laughs> then there was a guy in Maryland who ate his roommate's part of his brain and, like, his heart or whatever. And the, the, there's millions of stories like this. And the funny thing is that it just happens to be a bunch of black people eating faces off. Now, if you've seen any zombie movies at all, you know that once a person becomes a zombie, miraculously, they can run faster and jump higher. Times that by a black person becoming a zombie. <laughs> There's gonna have a bunch of Michael Jordans running around, just eating people's faces off and eating people up, so. Caucasians, the other, other white meat. Like, just be careful, <laughs> I'm just telling you right now. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get started really quickly. Uh, are you guys ready for your first comedian? That's not enough noise. Are you guys ready for your first comedian? Thank you for the noise. Please put your hands together and Justin, play me some music for Chicago's own Odenaka Izakoli. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Doing, wow, people! Indiana! I mean, I mean, Crown, Crown Point? I should know, I should do some research. Crown Points. They told me Zodiac Cafe, shut up, man. Y'all cool as fuck, though. Y'all seem cool as hell. Very friendly. Me and, me and Martin uh, were walking outside, and uh, this lady, she was really nice to us. She, like, assumed uh, we were afraid of her dog, so she just, like, kept it. <laughs> oh, we were like, that's so sweet! That's so sweet! Um, we we're, we happen to be black, but we're not afraid of your dog. But it's okay. I mean, I like that. That's that Midwest hospitality. It's cool. Uh, I'm excited to be here tonight. I uh, just moved into my first home. It's oh, good. It's also my parents' home. It's a little weird, man. It's uh, it's things are tight. It's me, my little brother, my little brother, a little. 
little sister. My uncle just moved in with us. And my parents in this three-bedroom house, things are rough. It's a house full of Nigerian immigrants living in America. And yet with this much less to fulfilling the Mexican dream. Yeah. <laughs> we're about two families short, but we're gonna make it. <laughs> got dreams and goals, baby. Goals. Just tell you guys about myself. Uh, my full name is Adinaka Chukumalachi Ozokoli. My parents' names are Ben and Monica. <laughs> Go figure. Oh man. People call me OD for short. People can call me OD on my life. Then I got to middle school, I told folks, stop calling me OD. Call me by my full name, Odenaka, because I was on this pro black, back to my Nigerian roots tip. No more OD, just Odenaka. And then I went to Nigeria for the very first time. I got to meet all these family members I never met before. And I remember specifically meeting my uncle, being super excited to meet him. And he came up to me and he asked me what my name was. And I was so proud to tell him my name, Odenaka. And he looked at me and he asked me, can I call you OD? <laughs> 5,000 miles for this? Work. <laughs> All right, cool, man. Yeah, man. When I first started doing uh, stand up a few years back, uh, when I was, I was still living in my folks' house, I, I moved to Chicago, I'm from Georgia. But back when I was in Georgia, uh, I was started doing, when I first started doing stand up, my dad didn't get where I was at all the time. Because I was always out performing. He came home one day, he got really pissed, and he sat down and said, hey, then I got, boom, 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 boom. Sit down here. Every night I come home, you are never here. So what is it that you're doing with your time? Where are you? Where is my son? What are you doing? What are you doing with your life? I was like, well, that I really like doing stand-up comedy. It's something I love to do, something I'm passionate about. He let out this really big sigh of relief that surprised me. He's like, oh, OK. Because all this time, I thought you would go out to different nightclubs, sleeping with men. <laughs> oh, really? That's the first thing you think when you don't see me at home? <laughs> Am I sleeping with dudes? Like, I was trying to figure out, what, what was his thought process? Like, how did he get to that point? Like, oh, my son is not here. I guess he's out sucking someone's dick right now. <laughs> <laughs> he could be out chilling with his girlfriend. He could be playing pool with the boys. No, I'm pretty sure he's tickling somebody's balls as he speaks. <laughs> that makes six sense. <laughs> Trip me out, man. Trip me out. Uh, I want to do an impression for you guys real quick, all right? Can do an impression for you guys? Is that cool? All right, this is my impression of the Tasmanian Devil. <laughs> uh, this is my impression of Lil Wayne. <laughs> I don't understand, dude. I, I don't. I don't get him. You guys are like you guys might be in Lil Wayne's demographic. I don't, I don't get him. I don't understand his lyrics. I feel like he should walk around with subtitles when he goes. With people like me I don't get what he says. Every time he walks into a room, closed caption brought to you by Young Money. <laughs> they translate it. <laughs> Pass the scissor. Uh, please. <laughs> Stop them, man. Why is it trip, man? The way he claims to be the greatest rapper alive. Which is whatever. I don't argue about that. Whatever, man. But what I will argue about is the greatest rapper of all time. When it comes down to the greatest rapper of all time, it comes down to two people. Tupac and Biggie. And I'd like to say Tupac is the greatest rapper of all time. Because every time I go to Nigeria, somebody's always trying to convince me that he's still alive. <laughs> For, I've had all night arguments with people like, yes, I just saw Tupac. He's in the market selling fish. Sorry. <laughs> really? You did not see Tupac, that was probably DMX. <laughs> All rappers do not look the same. Let's be real. I don't know. Oh yeah, I'm telling you guys, uh, by my first day of class, I, I grew up, I, I'm kind of weird, man, because I was born in Atlanta, raised, uh, raised down there in the South, then I went to high school in Nigeria. Never been to Nigeria before, first time. And it was really like a nerve-wracking experience for me. Like, I remember my first day of class, I was really nervous. And uh, whenever I'm nervous, I gotta pee. So I'm sitting in the classroom, been there for maybe 10 minutes, and I'm, the nervous is him, he's like, man, I gotta pee, I gotta get out of here. So I walk out of the classroom to go use the bathroom, and then as soon as I walk out, I realize, I don't know where the bathroom is at. But then I was like, yeah, this is Africa, you just pee wherever you want, right? <laughs> That's what you do. 
So I walked over to the first tree I saw and just started pissing on this tree. Did my thing, turn around and realized the tree that I picked was in front of not only my classroom, but the whole 10th grade block of classrooms. So I just beat it from a whole grade. I was like, I was just like, I walk in and girls are kicking like, did you see he's American BBC? <laughs> and it's fucking with me. And I go sit down and this dude taps me on the shoulder. He's like, hey, uh, don't do what you guys do in America. But here in Nigeria, you be in the bathroom. It's like, huh. Learn that one the hard way. All right. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a ballet in Chicago doing big things. <laughs> That's my day job. And the other day, I was at the steakhouse, and the other day, this uh, lady that would come, she was coming out with the, some of her friends, and they're like, hey, you know, we just finished this steak, and um, we just want to give it to a homeless person. Do you know if you can find some homeless people for us to give this to? Um, that would be cool. And we're like, yeah, yeah, sure, we're going to. Give it to him, whatever, don't worry about it. And she dropped the steak off and she left. And we're like, yo, we're totally gonna eat this steak, right? <laughs> we gotta eat this. We're ballets are right at home. It's one of the best steak houses in Chicago. Come on. <laughs> and so I took it. And I'm walking to my car. And as I'm walking to my car, deposit the steak, I see all these homeless people on the way. And I just started feeling really guilty. But then I started justifying all the reasons why they didn't deserve the steak and I did. I was like, ah, what? Look, look at this guy. He's so beast, I can't give him steak. He's just gonna get heart disease. I'm looking out for his health. Look, I, I, I'm not gonna give. He's got a limp. If I give him steak, he needs leg braces, not steak. If I had something, I'd give him to him, but I don't. It's like, ah, him. That guy looks kind of shady. Uh, I don't know, he just might use his steak to buy more drugs. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I keep him off that dope. <laughs> No embarrassing, man. I was at work the other day, and I was walking down the street in my ballet uniform. And I saw this dude I went to college with, which kind of tripped me out, because I never see people from the South that I know in Chicago. So I was like, hey, what's up, man? What's going on? How you doing? What are you doing up here? And he's like, oh, dude, I just graduated from med school. And then my heart just sank, because I was like, ah, man, you, we took the same classes, graduated the same degree in chemistry the same year, and you're about to be a doctor, and I'm, Parking cars I can't afford. <laughs> it was like this sad moment. I was like, ah, why did I even talk to you? So he's like, he's a, he's asking me what I'm doing, and I just want to tell him lies. Like I don't want to, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to fess up to. It's like, ah, right, so what are you, what are you, what are you doing here in Chicago? I'm, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I, uh, I do titrations at the hotel. I, uh, <laughs> using my degree, right? <laughs> do titrations on the water fountain. <laughs> he was a pie. He started big time. He backed away. It was, a, it was a sad moment for me. It's like, I want to talk to you. Like, I was, I was having such a good day, and he immediately made me regret. He just reminded me of, like, you know, failed dreams. I'm like, ah, I was going to do something with myself. Now I'm not. <laughs> oh, shit, man. There's sometimes people ask to talk about me, they're like, oh, dude, you dress, you dress so preppy. Why is that? It's like, look, man, before shows, I like to pace something out to get my jitters out or whatever. And I'm just aware, like, I walk around in residential neighborhoods, you know, I don't want, you know, people think I look, my, people might think that I look suspicious, and I don't want to get T-Martin. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I, just, I, just, I just learned, I'm just aware of the realities of America, you know, like, <clears throat> Trayvon taught me, I walk around with a hoodie, somebody might murder me. <laughs> but no neighborhood watch group is gonna hit up a dude wearing an express scarf and a fedora. <laughs> I've never seen that chalk outline anywhere. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> oh shit, man. Oh, another thing I'm excited about, I, um, I recently found out I could wear Magnum condoms. <laughs> Pretty excited for me. And you might think because I'm black, it's by default. But no, it's not by default. I always thought I was too nerdy for Magnums. I've always had astigmatism. Never liked sports, or supposedly skinny. These things don't go with Magnum Dick. <laughs> and one day I'm at this girl's house, and all she had was Magnums. And I wasn't about to go with Raw, so I was like, all right, I guess I gotta do this. So I took the condom from her and put it on confidently, like I knew what I was doing, but on the inside I was praying, please let this fit. <laughs> <laughs> because nothing is a bigger turnoff than a fully erect penis draped in saggy latex. <laughs> Just doesn't set the mood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, doesn't, man.
But I, I put it on and it fit. It wasn't baggy or anything. I was like, yes! I didn't want to fuck anymore, I just wanted to look at myself. <laughs> it changed my whole perspective of like black stereotypes and everything. Like fried chicken tasted better. <laughs> Tyler Perry movies started making sense. It was awesome. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah, it was good, man. The other day I was at this girl's house and uh, we were about to do the do, but we didn't. And, uh, but I got a little amb ambitious, a little anxious, and I, I had put a condom on, but we just fell asleep. So I woke up with this unused piece of latex on my penis. And it just like, it was a little, it was like a, it's a disappointing feeling. It just reminded me of the unfulfilled dreams of yesternight. <laughs> Which reminded me of the Langston Hughes poem, A Dream Deferred. I don't know if you guys are familiar. Uh, Langston Hughes, A Dream Deferred. Uh, so I just like to, I like to, uh, I just thought, like, what if I replace uh, the word dream with condom? So I'd like to recite for you guys tonight. Um, this is Langston Hughes. A condom deferred. <laughs> what happens to a condom deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or fester like a sore and then rot? Does it stink like rotten meat? Or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just hangs like a heavy loo. <laughs> or does it? Explode. <laughs> guys, guys, snap, come on. It's poetry. <laughs> yes. Yes, you'll learn, you'll learn. It's cool. It's cool. Oh, snap, man. You guys are fun, man. You guys are fun. Oh, yeah, my boy Keith, you were talking about, uh, you talk about the zombie shit. Yeah. Yeah, man, that tripped me out, man. Down in Miami? That is crazy, a little bit. It's like a dude, the police just come up on a dude on the side of the road eating somebody's face, butt naked in broad daylight on the highway. But the crazy part to me is that he was black. That just like really tripped me out. Like really, I was, I was trying to figure out like, ah, I don't know, but like I would just think, you would just think, I would think. If a flesh eating zombie was to ever walk the streets in real life, it would be a white dude. <laughs> Maybe that's just me, I don't know. Like, why, why people just, y'all just got the crazy stereotypes on lock. Bungee jumping, preemptively invading other countries, serial killers, like, eh, it just goes along with the riches that have been handed down, huh? Maybe that's just me. But, uh, but I got, that's cool, like, well, Keith touched on a little bit, like, dude, he got shot six times before he, start, before he stopped eating this guy's face. He took six shots. Before he stopped. That's determination. <laughs> this dude, I guess I'm gonna show you, like, white people might be known for doing crazy stuff, but when a black man does it, he still does it the best. <laughs> <laughs> Six shots, man. This dude is the Tiger Woods of zombies. <laughs> like, who, 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 who's bad at him? The only person that might, the only zombie that might possibly be bad at him was uh, Michael Jackson in Thriller. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. They uh, found out he was on hallucinogens when he did it, though, when he ate his face. Come on, man, you pansy. What? If you want to eat somebody's face, just eat their face. Why you got to be on hallucinogens when you do it? Come on, man. It's like, uh, like if I was going to fight somebody. I would just do it straight up. I'm not gonna go pre-game it with coke and alcohol. I'm not, I just fight him straight up because a real man would just fight him. So all I'm saying is real zombies eat faces straight up, no chaser. <laughs> if Mark McGuire has an asterisk by his home run record, somebody's looking at this guy's zombie credentials. <laughs> That's my stance. And you know, they saw, there was a, the, the, you mentioned it too, the, there, was a, there was a dude that ate this dude's brains and heart. You know, he was a Kenyan student. And he's got brains of heart. Guess what? No hallucinogens. All I'm saying is, African zombies are better than black American zombies. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> Unless we count Mike Tyson. Then, I don't know. I don't know. Mike Tyson, man. He was a prophet. He was trying to tell us 
of the coming zombie apocalypse. We all thought he was crazy. He had a message. He had a message. Oh, shit. Yeah, man. Go to Nigeria for the first time at 15, man. There's a lot of subtle differences between like growing up here and in Nigeria. For instance, believe it or not. Not a lot of white folks for some reason. I don't know if there's a boycott going on or something. But because there's so few white folks over there, the few white people that are there are instant celebrities. Because you guys, you guys, you too. You guys go to Nigeria right now, you'd be standing out of your ass left or right just for being pale. Yeah, you get off the plane, and I just be like, hey, look at the white person, please, sign my forehead. <laughs> Make that to my son, and I thought you would be. They love y'all, man. They love everybody. Y'all could be like a white Wu Klan clan. <laughs> Call it Wu Klan clan. Never mind. Never mind. Wu Klan clan. Fuck it. Fuck it. The kids get super excited, though, whenever they have a white sighting. They be coming home from school like, Daddy, it's so white guy today. <laughs> they don't say it like that, though. It's more like, Papa, I saw a white man today. <laughs> and they put in those thin lips, no Botox. <laughs> Just like the white man you tell us about in the fairy tales, yes. <laughs> That's more how they say it. <laughs> Kids being a mega wish man, they're just like, Please, let me see a white person before I get. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> oh shit, man. I think I should get out of here, man. I've been up here for a minute. How long have I been up here? Ah, fuck it. We do some more shit. Y'all heard, uh, heard about this bill that passed in uh, Arizona? Yeah? Nobody? Okay. Dramatic pause. <laughs> they passed this bill in Arizona uh, banning teaching Mexican American history in all the classrooms in Arizona, like in the high schools and everything. And asked the governor, like, yo, why did you sign this bill to law? She said, the reason I signed this bill to law because she was afraid that Mexican-American history, Mexican students would start hating white people to teach Mexican-American history. She's like, ridiculous, right? It's silly. I was like, I mean, if you're afraid Mexican students are gonna start hating white people to teach history, I don't know, man, you should just stop teaching all history. <laughs> Come over and listen to Holocaust, Fox News. <laughs> Stuff adds up. <laughs> and on that bright note, my name is Odenaka. Out.